children today i'll tell you about frequency polygon these type of diagrams are also based on frequency distribution as we have learned in the case of histogram now frequency polygon these are also known as line graph because these are joined or these are drawn on the basis of joint points or with the help of line so this is also known as line graph now first i'll tell you what is actually frequency polygon frequency polygon or frequency curve means a curve representing frequency distribution you know the meaning of frequency as i told you earlier frequency means number of times a particular data appears in a distribution so how many times a particular figure appears in the distribution that is called frequency and frequency polygon or frequency curve is a curve that represents frequency distribution in a particular data now these frequency polygons are drawn in two ways first is with histogram and second way is without histogram in the previous lecture i told you what are histograms these are joined rectangles representing the frequency distribution now when we are drawing the frequency polygon we can draw it in both ways either we draw the histogram first and then we take the midpoints of each rectangle and join the points by a line and then get the frequency polygon and if we are drawing it without histogram then first we have to calculate the midpoints and we plot the midpoints on o x and o y axis and then join the these points and get the frequency polygon okay so now i'll teach you how to draw the frequency polygon with histogram and without histogram with the help of examples now first we'll take how to draw it with histogram what is the method of drawing frequency polygon with the help of histogram first step is histogram is constructed of the given data whatever data is given to you that data is plotted in the form of histogram first and you know the method how to draw the histogram with the help of given data so the first step will be that plot the data in the form of histogram secondly take out the midpoints of the upper horizontal sides and mark it with the help of point that means all the rectangles what are drawn in the histogram take the midpoints of each rectangle and just mark it with a point thirdly midpoints are joined by the line all the midpoints of the rectangle are then joined by a free hand line or free hand curve figures so found is called frequency polygon that means first you have drawn the histogram then you have taken the midpoints you have joined the midpoints with the line or with the curve and the figure thus obtained this is known as frequency polygon now what is the next step end points are joined with the base line now you have taken the midpoints but the ends are open now these end points are joined with the base line to equate the area of polygon with the area of histogram now this will be more clear to you when you see the example okay so both the methods explain to you with the help of examples now first this is the example of drawing frequency polygon with the help of histogram now see here marks and number of students this is the given data marks in the form of class interval are given and number of students are given here in the form of frequency distribution now here as i have told you earlier you know very well by now that you have to draw two axes oy and ox oy will be the vertical axis ox will be the horizontal axis and always take the 
marks or the independent variable on the horizontal axis and dependent variable on the vertical axis. This means always take the frequency on the vertical axis and class interval on the horizontal axis. Now, according to the, this data given, first you will draw the histogram and this you know the method very well as I told you previously that 10 to 20 is the class interval, make a rectangle like this, 20 to 30 according to the frequency given, draw all the rectangles first. So, what was the first step here? First, plot the data in the form of histogram. Now, next step is take the midpoints of each rectangle here, take midpoints of each rectangle and join the midpoints with the help of line or freehand curve, straight line, right. Now, next step is the end points are joined with the baseline. This is the baseline. The end point because here you have taken the midpoint, but this midpoint will be extended till the baseline here and this one will be extended till the baseline here to equate the area of histogram with the frequency polygon. Now here in this diagram, you see that some area is shaded. What does this mean? This shows that the area which is outside the line, you can see that when you are drawing the line, some area of rectangle you are excluding. So, this shaded area is the excluded area, this is outside the line or outside the frequency polygon and this area which is white here, this area is inside the frequency polygon though it is not inside the histogram. So, some area of histogram you are excluding and some area of frequency polygon you are including. So, this will equate the area. That means, whatever you are excluding will be equal to the area you are including in the frequency polygon and this end point are again joined to equate the area. Whatever you have excluded to equate the area we have joined the end points so that this area is also within the frequency polygon. So, this way the curve what is shown over here, this is called frequency polygon and this frequency polygon I have drawn with the help of histogram. Histogram is the base here and with the help of histogram we get a curve which is known as frequency polygon. Got it? So, this is one method of drawing frequency polygon with the help of histogram. Okay. Now, I will tell you another method that is drawing frequency polygon without histogram. Two methods I told you, first is with histogram, another is without histogram. Now, in the case of without histogram, what you are supposed to do? Midpoints of various class intervals are taken and the corresponding frequencies are plotted. Here we have not taken the or we have not calculated the midpoints. We have just drawn the histogram and then plotted the midpoints on the graph. But here without histogram, when you are drawing the frequency polygon, then you do not have to draw the histogram. So, you have to calculate the midpoints and on the basis of midpoints, you will plot the frequency in the graph. So, here it says midpoints of various class intervals are taken and the corresponding frequencies are plotted in the graph. Okay. Now, we will take another example for this. This is the example here. Here marks and number of students, this data is given. Now, you have to calculate the midpoints or mid values of class interval of marks. Here 10 to 20, this is the class interval given. How to calculate the mid values? 10 plus 20 upon 2, you will get the value. 20 plus 30 upon 2, this way you will get the value, mid value. That means, this class interval 
this 10 plus 20 divided by 2 that will be the mid value. Same way all the class intervals are divided by 2 and we get the mid value that is 15, 25, 35, 45, 55 and 65. Clear? And the frequency is given here. Okay. Now, with the help of this, now we will draw the graph. Here we are not drawing the histogram now. We will just plot the mid values and the number of frequencies. For example, first mid value here is 15 and the frequency is 10. So, 15 you will find out here. This is 15 between 10 to 20 and the frequency is 10. So, this will be your first point. Clear? Second is mid value is 25, frequency is 15. So, 25 is here, frequency is 15. So, second point you will get here. Third is 35 and 20, 35 is here in between and 20 is here. So, this is third point. Then 40 to 50, then 22 and this is 22 another point. And then 50 to 60, frequency midpoint is 55 here and frequency is 15. So, 15 is here, plot the point here, taking 55 here and 15 here. Then 65 and 10, 5 and 10 is here, so you will get the points. And you join all these points and get a curve. Again, end points are joined with the baseline by the dotted line. So, this way the total area here, this is the area of frequency polygon and this whole diagram, this curve is known as frequency curve and the whole diagram is called frequency polygon. Okay, children. So, this way you have learned two ways of drawing frequency polygon. One was with histogram, another is without histogram. You can compare both. Here the diagram is with the help of histogram, but the curve is also like this and here also curve is drawn with the help of plotting points. So, this way both the histograms are drawn. Now, we will see, suppose there are more than one frequency curve in the same diagram. Two frequencies are given. Now, the question is, can you plot two frequency curve on the same diagram? The answer is yes, you can plot two frequency curve on the same diagram or on the same graph, but there are certain conditions. One is when total frequency in each distribution are same, all distribution must have same classes and same size of class interval, but frequency may be different. So, if you are drawing two frequency curve, this type of frequency curve or frequency polygon on the same diagram, then the condition is that frequency may be different, but the classes and class interval should be the same. This is one condition. So, when total frequency in each distribution are same, all distribution must have same classes. Total frequency is same, but individual frequency is different and class interval is same. So, the total of frequency should be same and the class size should be same. Then we can draw two frequency curve on the same diagram. This again I will tell you with the help of an example. Okay. Now, let us take this example here. Marks obtained by students, class, midpoints and frequency. Now, as I told you, we are drawing two frequency curve on the same diagram. So, two frequencies I have taken section A and section B. This means that marks are obtained by the students of section A and section B. Now, class interval, this is class, this is class interval. This is 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 30 to 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. And the midpoints again we have taken over here in the same way as I call calculated earlier and we will get 5, 15, 25, 35 and 45. 
this is the midpoint. Now, two sections are there. In first section, section A, children are getting marks between 0 to 10, 2 children and 10 to 23 and so on. This is the frequency of marks of children of section A, right? This is the frequency of marks of students of section B, right? As I told you, the class interval should be the same when we are drawing two frequency curve, but the frequency may differ. Here you see that frequency is not the same, frequency is different, but the total is the same. So, as I told you, total of frequency should be the same, though frequency may differ and the class interval should be the same, then only we can draw two frequency curve, okay. Now, here total is same 20, 20. Now, we will plot the graph as the class interval is between 0 to 50. So, we will divide the axis till 60, this is class interval and here frequency again on the vertical axis, frequency is ranging, you, you see it just at a glance, it is from 1 to maximum is 8. So, divide it equally into 8 parts, so that you cover the whole frequency. Again now, take the midpoint, this is 5, section A first plot the graph, 5 is the midpoint, section A, first point will be here 5, here will be 2, then 15, 3, this is 15 and this is 3, then 25, 5, 25 and 5, then 35 and 8, this is 8 and then 45 and 2, right? And join it by freehand curve and you get the frequency curve. Same way, take for section B, 5 and 1, this is one point, then 15 and 4, 15 is here, this is second point, 